Did you know that we have channel memberships now? If you'd like to help support this channel, get some exclusive Koabana emotes to use in the comments, as well as an exclusive badge by your name, click the join button now to find out more. Every bit of support really helps. Thanks guys. It's not uncommon to hear stories of strange hauntings during the development of horror games made in Japan. It seems almost every horror game has some terrifying behind-the-scenes story that rivals the game content, and Fatal Frame is no exception. Although, with Fatal Frame, much like the games themselves, it seems that the hauntings truly never end. This week, we're going to dive into some of the stranger happenings behind the scenes from the creators themselves. It's not uncommon for those working in the Japanese entertainment industry to invite a priest or monk to perform a purification ritual, either before, during, or after work has finished on something. Not everyone believes in it, of course, but it's a superstition that has hung around nevertheless, and there are many who still do believe it has some effect. The idea is that working on something involved with ghosts and spirits may actually invite them in. So, to be on the safe side, you better cleanse everyone involved, just in case. Shibata Makoto, the director of the Fatal Frame series, mentioned in an interview on the official Fatal Frame website that he told the other staff members working on the game that they weren't going to perform a purification ritual whilst making it. Kikuchi Keisuke, the producer, tried to get him to arrange for one, but Shibata refused, claiming that nobody would be scared if they did so. There were staff members on the team who believed in curses and spirits, however, and because he refused to allow them to perform a purification ritual, they showed up to work with charms and amulets hanging from their necks instead. Shibata reportedly hung up a charm himself, just in case. Whenever he arrived at work, he'd find it fallen from its position, despite nobody having touched it. Yet, this wasn't the only strange occurrence to happen during the making of the first game. According to Shibata himself, one staff member claimed that someone, or something, had grabbed and pulled his hair, even though nobody was there. Another saw a woman reflected in some glass, even though it was dark and nobody was there. And yet, despite these fantastic stories to tell the press when promoting their horror game, he didn't. Why was that? The following is a translation of a certain incident that, according to Shibata, happened during the first game's development. A ghost really appeared in the office. It was around 2am one night, towards the end of the game's development. I was the only one still working on the floor. Everyone else had gone to take a nap. It's a little lonely being the only person on the entire floor, but these things happen. The computer fan was the only thing I could hear in the silence, and as I looked up from my computer, I noticed the conference room door was open. My desk was in the corner of the fifth floor, meaning I could see over the entire floor. From there, I could see the fifth floor conference room door was open, but because I was to the side of it, I couldn't see what was beyond it. Then a white face suddenly poked out from the side. His face was expressionless and eyes closed, while his mouth hung open a little, like he'd lost all strength. And on top of that, his hair was so thin. I mean, from where I was sitting, it looked like he didn't have any hair at all. There was a guy by the name of Yu in the team who had a pale face. I thought he must have been sleeping in the conference room and was playing around, trying to make me laugh. Yu had brown hair, so I thought maybe that was what his hair looked like as it blended into his skin tone. But then, the face suddenly withdrew back into the room. Then it popped out again, going back and forth. It was a rather amusing sight, and I laughed unexpectedly. There was nothing I could do about the situation, so I went back to work. 
After focusing on my work for about an hour, I suddenly saw a face again as I let my mind start to wander. It was that same face, moving back and forth, in and out of the door. Come on, now it's a bit too much, I thought and stood up. But as I did, the face pulled back into the room and disappeared. I looked inside the room, but it was pitch black. I turned the light on, but nobody was inside. If that were the case, then who had I just seen? I'd seen a ghost. Without a doubt, I'd clearly seen something that shouldn't exist. But even for a ghost, it was so amusing. Supposing that face was looking right at me as it moved, then maybe it might have held some grudge towards me, but it was constantly facing the side, popping in and out. So all I could do was laugh. This is probably the case with most ghostly experiences. He didn't hold a grudge against me, nor was he trying to scare me. He was just moving on the spot. I don't know what he was trying to do, but it was an awkward encounter. Unlike ghost stories, real ghostly encounters don't really have a punchline. Many are just abrupt throwaways. These days, it's just a funny story I tell, but at the time, it really bothered me. I think those listening to this story probably wouldn't know how to react either. And that's why I never told anyone about it. So, if we're to believe Shibata's own story, not only did he see a ghost while working on the game, but several other staff members reported far more frightening experiences as well. And that wasn't even all. There were also reports of lights breaking suddenly in the office, and Shibata again finding long strands of hair, like that from a woman, both at home and in his work bag and keyboard. How did they get there? Nobody knows, but producer Kikuchi joked that there were several non-ghostly ways that could have happened. The Fatal Frame games are no strangers to weird stories. The very first video of this series was on the strange, potentially ghostly voice captured in the second game that the sound director didn't remember recording. Subsequent games have also had their fair share of strange happenings, but I'll look at those in separate videos at a later date. Was the team working on the first game haunted because Shibata refused to conduct a purification ritual? Or was it scared developers seeing and hearing things where nothing really existed? Was it nothing more than promotion for their brand new horror game? Because after all, what's a good horror game that doesn't have several terrifying events happen behind the scenes? It's perhaps not quite on the level of the kawaii shashing game rumours, but people would undoubtedly be disappointed if their favourite scary video game didn't have at least one or two strange stories to go along with its making. But what do you guys think? Was the development team just exaggerating or hyping things up to create interest in their game? Or was it perhaps the director's misstep in not having a purification ritual performed, as is the norm when working on horror media in Japan? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time.